So good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. A little late, but it's our first meeting of 2023. And we actually, an, an agenda item pertains to whether we have the whole personnel board team here, which it appears we do not. But I don't, other than uh, nice to see everybody, I hope you had good holidays and are raring to go for the winter slash spring <laughs> term. Don't rush it, Tony. Mm -hmm. Don't rush it. We're not okay. There okay. All right. All right. Got a couple weeks before the term starts. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I can't believe how late it's starting at UMass this year, February. Wow. Yeah. That is. Anyway, I hope everybody's doing well. I don't really have any announcements. Um, and uh, we need to move on to, does anybody else have some announcements or greetings or want to tell everybody what you did over the holidays, where you went skiing? Because it wasn't anywhere nearby here, that's for sure. I just got back from Aruba. Oh, good for you. One happy island. Uh, it's, it's It has a lot like Amherst. There's no snow in Aruba either. Right. Just like Amherst, Tony. I mean, right. really, the similarity is there, there was creepy how uh -huh. similar it was. Uh, I don't have any idea. Can do, do, Does anybody, let's see, Melissa, do you know, do we have any folks yes. from the public? Uh, uh, no, there's nobody from the public here. Okay. Now, reports and comments, progress getting employee representative for the board. Where are we on that? Who knows, huh? <laughs> I, I myself um, did, was not aware of that um, item, and I'm sorry, I'm going to take note of that. Is that something that... Um, well, we're, we, we're a five-member board, and uh, two of the slots are designated. Tammy has one, that's from the Library Board of Trustees, and the other is supposed to be more or less a representative of the town employees, who I think I learned last time, maybe I knew it already, the main criterion is you have to live in Amherst. You don't have to have been a former town employee, I guess. Oh, okay. Um, but you have to live in Amherst. And so Paul seemed to suggest last time they had somebody in mind, but I that has not yet happened. And I want to push pretty hard on getting that slot. Bill, yeah. first the employee. Yeah, side. I agree. And Melissa, you weren't, you didn't have an opportunity to work when Charlie Sherpa, who was our former police chief, was on the board. He was retired, but he was on the board. I don't know if you know him or met him, but I mean, it's really good to have that perspective and um, point of view uh -huh. in these conversations. Okay, so I will um, add that to my agenda and uh, follow up on that. I. Um... I don't know who the person uh, is that Paul seemed to have in mind. Oh, yeah. Um, and well, we just, I really want to push on that. You know, they deserve mm -hmm. representation. We need as much good input from our deliberations as, uh, as possible. It also, when there are actually only four members of the board we can run into, and it's been a close call a couple of times, not having a quorum because when one of us can't be here and we and we know that, we knew that in Tam, uh, Tammy's case last time, then if a, if a second person can't be here, no quorum, no legal meeting. So, right. so I would like to get that fixed and... Um, I don't know. I'm going to toss out an idea here. This may or may not be. Well, I'll, let me just toss it out. We have we have two people who are in the area. I don't know if either one of them live in Amherst. That certainly know a heck of a lot about the deliberations of this board. And one is the former HR director, Deb Radway, who I think works for Hadley now. And the other is Joanne Maziasek, who... <laughs> just took the job in uh, Belchertown. Mm -hmm. Now that may be 
too much of a good thing. I don't know, having all that expertise, we may be, need somebody a little, you know, more removed from the deliberations of the board, but I'd like to like to see that get. My brain was going a whole nother way. I was thinking okay. the idea is to have somebody that can, that has the pulse of employees, what's going on for employees, right? Of the town. Right. So I, I know this is sort of maybe a little left field, but like, um, I don't know if any of you know the app Nextdoor. Don't have it. Yeah. It's an it. app. It's called Nextdoor. And basically it's <clears throat> by zip code and where people, like it's a neighbor thing. So anybody in the zip code, you verify that you live there and you like, you know, you share a Bobcat sighting or somebody needs, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's like everything. But a lot of really good networking happens through Nextdoor. And I just didn't know like it's very on the ground and it's people that live in the zip code work live and so i don't know i just it would seem to me that being on this board would be there's some there would be people that would be like yeah mm -hmm. I, I, I would like to do that but would have no idea that this position is here and so somehow getting the word out through a more on the ground to the people all right well, feels yeah, good I'm to me <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure about that, but I I do agree with maybe a a more proactive approach to yeah. getting a yeah. somebody uh, on because I mean, that opens up a <laughs> big can of worms. Um, however, I don't know can can Paul or somebody or maybe you already have sent out a email to the current employees to see if they might see, offer a suggestion of a former co-worker yeah. um, that was sensitive and, and had paid attention to town management, lives in the area. And, I mean, I agree, we need somebody. And, yeah. and Ch Charlie was great because he was definitely on, an on the ground person. Forceful and, representative. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's right, that's Employee. right. When Charlie speaks, we listen. Yeah. So, and the, the other, just Melissa, a, a little bit of history. Th that person, that that seat, that uh, is often where employees who have an issue will turn oh. first. Mm -hmm. okay. you know, this is really bugging me. I got to give Charlie a call. Mm -hmm. see, you know, if the personnel board can do anything or what can be done about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it Thank it uh, it 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 really is best if it's a person reasonably well known to the employees and somebody they would uh you know trust and respect to look out for their interests and be a good listener so and i i agree with you kath and i don't know how if if this position has been advertised <laughs> if it's been posted you know uh but soliciting some input from those folks seems like a very reasonable uh way to proceed so Let's set it as a goal. The next time we meet, we want that person to be a member of the board, whoever she or he is. If now, there's anything we can do, we'll do we'll do it. Is there anyone on the list who's recently retired who might be appropriate? I don't know enough about town employees, but that might be a possibility. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, who just retired after five years? Let's see. <laughs> George Gillespie, firefighter. Oh, that's after uh, almost 10 years. Yep. Very Stephen nice. Call. And the fire just department. retired after 30 years. And 30 years. Wow. <clears throat> oh, that's right. Yes. <laughs> Lost my, my mathematics ability there for a moment. Anyway, all right, let's move on. What are we doing next here? Uh, new business. Full-time non-union compensation and classification study. We've yeah. talked about that for a long time. Any news on that front? Yes. Um, so I apologize if this is an old piece of business to me. It is a new piece of business. <laughs> um, but anyhow, the, the town last did a compensation and classification study in 2014. And of course, since that time, um, wages and the employment landscape has changed significantly. 
So in an effort to remain competitive and to be an employer of choice, uh, we'd like to endeavor to do another compensation and classification study for non-units um, outside of the school department. And um, the study will determine whether existing salaries and, com and the compensation structure for non-union employees at the town of Amherst are competitive within today's markets and will further address internal relationships within the organization to help determine equity. So I have prepared a uh, SWQ, which is in quotes as this project $50,000 and um, responses will be due at the end of the month. So we expect this project to take less than a year. And of course, before implementing any changes will be um, to, to the wages or the classifications, we'll be seeking this committee's feedback. And of course, I, I suspect that further administration, administrative action will be necessary, um, but I will keep you posted as, as this goes along. We hope that work will uh, start very soon. Okay, good. That what, SWQ? SWQ. Seeking written quotes, as opposed to RFP. Okay, I, I yes. was going to ask you, Melissa, are you reading from an RFP there? <laughs> <laughs> this is a SWQ, um, I am told. So I'm new to this process. <laughs> but because it is okay. under a certain monetary threshold, it's a little bit different of a process. Oh. Yes. And what's the upper limit on the budget? 40. 40, okay. Yes. All right. And I, 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 am, I believe it will be much less than that. Okay. Well, the last one certainly was. So we're dealing with 61 non-union employees and 48 non-union positions. Yes. And, yes. And I mean, that's the, that's the focus. Um, but often what the results of that study is when they're implemented becomes sort of a benchmark to look at all the other systems that we've right. got. So everything has to remain <laughs> in balance. You're gonna you're gonna discover if you haven't already, even though you've only been around full time for about a month, is it was a heck of a balancing act mm -hmm. it goes on right. with probably with everything, but with the personnel procedures and the personnel board. You know, it, our our domain in in one sense is rather narrow because our primary focus is just the folks who aren't in a union. And as I'm sure you've learned by now, I think the town has five or six unions that you also have to deal with and they negotiate their own contracts. And so everything sort of has to be more or less in sync so that uh, one party is not way out of whack with, uh, with the other. Okay, so that's about to go out, right? That's about to go yes. viral. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, we're, we're seeking um, responses by the end of the month. Okay, all right. Very Can good. I just ask, just yeah. for process, is that is this what towns do? They conduct studies X number of years after X number of years to determine salary scales? Like, is this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Every once in a while, and I think ten years is a good mark. Um, it's it's we start with um, uh, surveys of other towns and other regions, and maybe. For competitive um, positions, we may look to the private sector and, and, and we start with that study and then we compare what we find to where we are to see if, if we're competitive or we need to adjust the scale and the wages. And so that work makes total sense to me. The part I'm thinking of is, do we always bring in an external consultant to do that work? Like, do we just not do that as well, we part of our work? Well, no, I think that an external consultant is um, standard and we did do that in 2014. Yeah, I know we did. And I'm just trying to, I'm like thinking like, right. And so like, that's not work that we just do as the town to like survey, figure it out what's going on. We towns hire external firms to tell them what's going on. Yes. And then I, I we're looking also for kind of a guide to help us along for the next, you know, maybe 10 years to um, do those kind of um, changes well, ourselves to help us move along ourselves. And then, you know, at a certain point, we'll want to check back in, I guess, with the temperature of the employment. Yeah. Um, yeah. Landscape. Yeah. I'm just learning because I, I don't come from public, you know, uh, administration I come from school, the school side of life. And it's like, it, yeah. So like a finance department, Accountant, we would handle like this is what's going on in the other districts and 
this is what we got to do. And here are the state guidelines. And so I just was struck for a minute, like, oh, right. Do we always go out for an external consultant? <laughs> I know that um, where I'm coming from in the community college system, we were looking at doing that as yeah. well. All of the college systems were, yeah. Well, the community colleges. Great. Thank you. The answer, uh, Rebecca, is almost always, but way back when, this was when I first joined the board a long time ago. Uh, at that time, the board was actually finishing doing it themselves. Yeah. And I think the learning from that, it was, well, we don't ever want to do that again ourselves. Right. Because it's a lot of work. And, um, and I, and, and it was a lot of work for, I mean, the, the, the board members actually did a lot of interviewing and a lot of analyzing and stuff like that. And I think I remember specifically, they went to the business school to see if folks there had expertise in classification systems and all of that stuff. And basically the learning from that was, well, let's use a professional who does this and knows how to do it and has data available for comparisons. Mm -hmm. But I do want to mention with respect to the surveys that actually, I think it was only about three years ago when um, <clears throat> There was a feeling among uh, sort of the upper level man and managers in the town that all of this attention, this is sort of driven by raising the minimum wage and that those positions at the higher level were beginning to fall behind. And we were gonna try to investigate that. And then Paul said, I think Great Barrington just did a little survey of their own to see how people at the manager, director, whatever the, classification is it's not quite what we might call the glass ceiling level but so they had done a survey uh throughout the state and when that was done we looked at the data and the data said no amherst is not our, our managers are not out of whack with what most there's always a couple of towns uh in the in the commonwealth that where they get the money to pay those kinds of rates is uh you know, you, you wonder about it. I think what a town in, uh, on the Cape uh, seems to have a lot of money. I don't know if it was Brookline or some uh, some other place had you know, pay scales that were generally, you know, uh, on the high end, a real, real stretch. So the surveys that are available are consulted if they speak to what our needs are, but we're ready to do another serious look at this uh, with the help of a professional who knows what they're doing and see what they come up with. And let's hope, you know, in the end, it's money well spent and the town and it, particularly its employees are yeah. better off for it, specifically those not in the union. But again, this is probably going to, you know, trickle down or trickle out to everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pretty soon, uh, union, unions are going to look at it and they say, well, wait a minute, come on. You know, we need to do this. Although in a couple of the unions, there's, well, I think most of them. But they've got their own really good data. You know, what are firefighters being paid and so forth, and the police officers. But so I'm glad this is underway. The history is helpful. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, could I um, sure just also yeah. note that I've been watching the uh, council meetings on Zoom, and there's a, a lot of pressure right now on the town and the school department that. Uh, the administrators are making too much money. So I think this, a lot of complaints about fairness and equity. So I think this is a very proactive way for us to be dealing because uh, these complaints, although they may have no legitimate <laughs> uh, backing, uh, don't help the morale or the, or the, credibility of the town. So uh, yes. and then one other thing, I, I know this is, uh, it always seems like the question is the town versus the private institutions. And is there any way we will have some idea when the survey, when this work is done, how we rank with private companies and particularly in terms of those highly skilled positions where people leave or are tempted to leave. This is an, this is about state, this is about 
uh, town employees, is it not? Yes. Am I, yeah. Yes, and yes. I assume I assume that we will have that data. So Some that, idea. I do yeah. believe so. Right, like IT people leave because they could, yeah, get twice as much. In At a private. different town. These are how these towns ranked, and this yeah. is how they rank. Yeah. I think we okay. will see that comparison. Yes. it will be helpful. Okay. All right. Uh, next agenda item: uh, remote work policy. What's that yes. about? Well, um, since COVID, remote and hybrid work has be have become really commonplace in the workplace, and um, in an effort to now, it's an also a desired employee benefit. So again, in order to remain competitive, and so that our match our practices, we want to begin working on a remote work policy, and so. Um, my predecessor began some research on some other policies and I'll um, take up where she left off and continue that research and take a first pass at drafting a remote work policy um, that this committee can help me vet along with other multiple stakeholders so that we can come out with something that we can present to the people. Um, I think it's gonna take a lot of um, collaborative work to come out with this. Um, I, I do have a little bit of experience with this in my past, so I'll, I'll also draw from there, but it's gonna be an interesting process, I think. Okay, let me ask the dumb question for a member of the personnel board. Do we have a remote work policy now? We do not. Okay, so getting one kind of seems yes. like a reasonable idea. Yes. So, and I, and I do know that there were it, uh, you know, I think Paul was under some uh, some <laughs> duress from time to time about who can work where and who right. has to be in town hall and uh, right. that sort of stuff. So some kind of a policy that can be leaned on by those who make you know decisions is probably a good idea. So good luck with that task. <laughs> oh, it's going to be daunting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you came to work for the town now. <laughs> I think it'll 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 be interesting though. Yeah. And now there's another not that tiny project uh, on the agenda: update on the personnel procedures manual committee review. Is that's a no small undertaking? At least the last time we did it, it was a pretty major collaborative effort. So, what's happening on that front? Well, I've looked into the files and it looks like this group um, got together a few times in the spring and in the early fall. And so um, I've called them back together. Our first meeting will be January 23rd. Um, there's a lot of us. I've also invited the DEI director to join that group. So it was the last working group that's been recalled. And um, I've, all, I've discovered a pattern of um, in their schedule, in the schedule uh, for the next couple of months. So I'll be able to find time to meet with the group. Oh. <laughs> um, I, I expect we'll meet bi-weekly until our work is complete, but I'll, I'll know more after our first meeting and after I know more of what, how the group wants to proceed. Okay. So that is underway, about to be formed. Yes. Now, Rebecca, I want to go to you because when we were talking about this last time, I think you were wondering, you know, what, how can the board be more involved in this process? It was something like that. Maybe, maybe uh, that isn't exactly what you were wondering about. But I know, you know, for a while, uh, quite a few years ago, I think this might have been before you you were uh, with us, but the board was going line by line on the whole damn manual. And uh, then that got to be a lot of work and coordinating it and so forth. And then when uh, Deb Bradway said, well, let's pull together a team of employees and do it, that's turned out to be a much better way to do it process-wise, besides the, the bonus of uh, a little team building with the group that was, that was on that. And I, I don't have any particular, I'm just wondering, and I, I'm thinking out loud now, and I should have thought about this before, because the question I'm asking myself, is there any, are there any particular parts of that personnel procedures manual that I think we need to pay special attention to? And so uh, Tony is now gonna uh, tell himself, well, go look at it and see. Um, and if, if, if there is, then tell somebody. 
about it. Let me encourage my colleagues. I'm sure that's what you'd like to do just before you go to bed is to get that old manual out there and take a look at it. And if you uh, don't find uh, an issue that needs attention before you go to sleep, then that's okay. All right. So, all right. Um, but, so Tony, were you yeah. asking me to weigh in? You you, you prefaced well, that. Well, yeah, time. I was, and I was I was trying to look at. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to. So just some thoughts. I I think it is would be prudent for the uh, us our board to put our eyes on the manual. I, I think yeah. I think that's really important. I think there are really good protocols for dialogue, though. I don't think it should be like here's the manual, read it, feedback. It, yeah. that doesn't work at all right. so if it, if the idea is like maybe the table of contents and we did a a pass of like you know like yeah we should look at that no we shouldn't look at that or something um or what do i notice when i look at this table of contents what do i wonder something because i think we should have our eyes on it yes it's a better process stronger if, if it's an employee team and this board had a whole dimension that it added to that personnel manual about what is professional development for mm -hmm. upper managers, how should people work together, what does it mean to give feedback, what does it mean to supervise, things that maybe employees wouldn't, you know, they're coming from their own lived experience in it, and our team was coming from a like more global, this is how it's going on in the world, that we want to make sure it's happening. So I have a combo of like, we should put our eyes on it, to see if there's some area that we really ought to dig into. Also, I know Tony and I know all of us like, oh, the manual, read it at night, fall asleep. I don't know why it has to be that way. Why can't a manual use Canva and have graphics and be great and show it's a, a town of choice to work in? Like why, why does it, why does it have to be terrible? You know, like, or boring. It doesn't have to be. So that's just another thing too, I think of is like, what is the intended use and users of the manual? It could also be this beautiful selling point when you come on board, you're like, what? An engaging, interactive manual? What? What? That's 21st century. So right. I just want to put that perspective in there as well. Like we totally redid our graduate student handbooks in the College of Ed to make them something that students are, are like using. And then we use it in our marketing materials. And anyway, yep. that could be too much. Who wants to do that? Nobody wants to do that. Okay. But I just wanted to put it out there. Well, I was just doing uh, a very quick search, uh, real time. Um, can I find the old manual? And the answer is no, not in the <laughs> 60 seconds. But look what I did find. I don't know if you can read it. Final report. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the last one. <laughs> so, which goes back to another thing that's on the agenda, was on the um, minutes from last time. And I think I asked about it or somebody did, that could we get going in using some sort of communication set of tools where it's not like, where's the manual? We just go to the drive or the yeah. Teams folder, or they, like, there it is, that we just would pull it up right now. We'd have it in front of us. So. So I think we do, we do have a mechanism for that. We have a shared drive that people can access. Um, I don't know if you have access, you probably should, but I'll, I thought the comment was more geared toward when we start working on it, can we put it in a shared doc? That's the notes I took. But um, yeah, we can do both that could be good things. too. Just as long, yeah, like okay. right now we're talking about the, we're talking about it. Access and if there was it. a link mm -hmm. in the agenda right now, even PDF. So visually we were looking at it together. Just be so helpful. Okay. Yeah. And just do you have um, access to that J drive? I think it's the J drive, right, Elizabeth? I don't know. I don't okay. know. Uh, I, I think not, but I don't know is the more accurate answer. So, okay, we'll look into that. All right. I think we're ready to take a look at the latest staffing report, which didn't uh, show a whole lot of action, comings and goings. Uh, and uh, I don't think there's, uh, in fact, uh, I think only one person has been hired since the last report. And um, everybody who has come and gone in the last month, they're all white people. There are 
two men left and one woman has come on board in public works. So it's a quiet month of hiring and departing. So can you just maybe, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit curious, what are the searches uh, that are going on right now? Is there, is there I mean, um, for, for example, let's take the police department. <clears throat> about which we read in the paper now and then, some folks thinking there are too many and some saying they're not enough. Do, are there, is a police, and this is just for my own interest and, and if it bores everybody else, we don't have to talk about it, but are, are, is the police department looking for more folks? Do we know? I know that oh. they're, sorry, Elizabeth, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I know that you took part in some interviews um, a couple for of weeks ago for mm -hmm. a patrolman, yes. So I think that they are trying to get ahead of it so that when the next academy happens, they have some prospects already lined up for it. Yep. And how about fire? Are they? Uh... Um, I know that I don't think they've started interviewing, but I know we put an ad out for firefighters, I think, beginning in December. Um, so I think that they're sifting through all the applications that come in and um, in the coming weeks we will be setting up interviews. Okay. Any other areas uh, that are needing to be? Um, I think it was mentioned last time the planning department is is down um, to planners. So I think that they, um, I think they did interviews last week. Um, so I think they're going to be making decisions this week or next week about who to move forward with. Okay. And Elizabeth, I don't, I don't know if you know, uh, but uh, I'm pretty sure, I'm, Melissa, the town does a whole lot of, hires a whole lot of part-timers for the summer. Right. And I, I, uh, I don't know how they do that. Uh, I think it must go reasonably smoothly because I don't think that's ever been uh, an issue that the board has had to uh, pay attention to. But I would imagine at some point this spring, there's, you guys in the, in the HR department are going to be doing a lot of paperwork, bringing people on. Yes, that's what I heard. Yes, yeah. I think um, early, maybe to mid spring um, before the summer comes, um, I think Amherst Rec hires quite a bit of staff. Um, I obviously wasn't here for it this past year, but I think we're gonna try to be well prepared. <laughs> I know that um, E in our office has been doing, uh, had done a lot of work with the rec center to make it more smooth and is working. Um, actively with them to make that a, a smooth onboarding process. I think leisure services um, does has more part timers than the rest of the town combined by by several factors because of all the part time help, uh, even not just in the in the summer, but uh, you know basketball referees and things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so again, moving along here, I think we're ready to uh, look at the minutes of our December meeting and see if we need to make any revisions or additions, exceptions. If not, do I hear a motion? To approve the minutes of the December 21. I make a motion to approve. Is there second. a second? Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. So I'm, now I'm not voting because I wasn't there. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, next board meeting. We we put February 15th there with a sort of a question mark because, um, and this is actually, I'm, I'm looking forward, uh, and I'm sorry Paul isn't here, to now is about the time when we start talking about the annual employees meeting, mm. which uh, normally has been sometime in March, and it's a big deal, Melissa. Uh, Paul, uh, the town manager, is usually the star attraction because he 
has a few things to say and brings everybody up to date, particularly on wage and salary and COLA and things like that. Uh, and it's for the for the board members, it's mostly for us a listening session. What's on your minds? You know, what do we need to be paying attention to? And uh, so that's what that's what we do. My memory is, uh, and uh, let me see, Rebecca and Catherine, I think that March meeting last year was shoved back to April or maybe mm -hmm. even May. I know it was one year. I think Paul felt that if we delayed it by a month, he'd have more to say. <clears throat> so I'm just uh, raising the issue about that pretty important meeting as we talk about whether or when we meet in uh, February. Let me see, I think from some of the things uh, Melissa just said, we, we might have some important news to talk about then, uh, right on the, uh, for example, how the work is going on uh, looking at the manual and and you, you said the, the bids were, were, were due the end of January. Right. right, so we'll we'll be able to identify who's working with us, um, and at that point, I think they'll have hopefully begun some interviews with some directors and um, and other people. Uh, also, I think I'll have something on the remote work for you. I oh, hope good. too. Okay, so so because we have from time to time when when it's known in advance that we're very unlikely to have anything super urgent or super important at our normally scheduled next monthly meeting, we'll just say, well, let's wait until you know the following month. But I'm what I'm hearing is, yeah, we should go ahead and uh, change the, you know, take away the question mark about the February meeting. It will be Wednesday the 15th. Does that sound right to the rest of my colleagues? So erase the question mark, move it from pencil to ink as, mm -hmm. We old fashioned folk used to say. I, I just want to put out there that I have a department meeting that day, that time. Well, so. what a terrible conflict for you, Rebecca. Now, you know, let me tell you, I prefer to be at this meeting. Well, uh, then, uh, you know, you need, uh, you have a higher calling, the citizens of Amherst. <laughs> One, the meeting one. is not till 10 30. Is our meeting at nine? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's fine. Just <clears throat> want to make sure. You can handle that. I yeah. can definitely handle that. Yes. So, Tony, I, remind me, was our was the um, meeting on Zoom last year? We didn't come in for it, did we? I think it was on Zoom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's been a while since. Yeah. It, <laughs> All right. It uh, used to be a packed house, <laughs> Melissa. Yeah. Look yeah. Where was it held in the past? In the town well, meeting the, uh, room. Okay, of course. <clears throat> yeah, which had more room than it does now. We had more room then too. Yeah, but it's been several years since we've had that townwide employee meeting in in person. Yep. So I think we're 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 agreed that we will meet February the fifteenth. And any other issues to put before this August? body if night see you can make both meetings next on the 15th next rebecca look it isn't even quarter to uh to 10 yet so are we ready to adjourn go find a cup of coffee you got a little extra time okay <laughs> thank you very much thank you thanks, thanks everybody have a good afternoon everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye. bye 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 bye